But take a look at the issues that we are fighting for on every one of those issues. Lindsay, guess what? American people support me, not you. Independent Senator Bernie Sanders laid the smack down on Republican Senator Lindsey Graham. Sorry, I've been watching some wrestling during the uh, Fox News debate. So this was a random debate they held for some reason. I'm going to show you six incredible clips here. This debate was really very, very enjoyable. So I'm going to show you six clips. And at the end, I'm going to discuss something that this debate really made me realize. But before we get to that, let's get to the important stuff. First, here is a clip shortly after their opening statements where Bernie is exposing Lindsey Graham's influences. The Democrats have the House, the Senate, and the White House. All these problems that were talked about, they could change or fix if they could. Their agenda is not working. So here's what I want to tell you. Vote Republican in 2022. Do yourself a favor. What you don't hear him talking about are, in fact, the most important issues facing this country. That's what the establishment does. And Lindsay is a very good and effective representative of the establishment. Does Lindsay have the concern that we are the only major country on earth not to guarantee health care to all people? That some 60,000 people a year die because they don't get to a doctor on time? I didn't, I didn't hear much about that in that opening statement. Lindsay care that we have the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs and that the pharmaceutical industry right now has 1,500 paid lobbyists in Washington, D.C. to make sure that in some cases we pay 10 times more for the medicine that we need? Did Lindsay talk about the fact that we have in South Carolina and all over this country tens of millions of workers working for starvation wages? Did he talk about a corrupt political system in which billionaires today can start a super PAC. And I guess you have some familiarity with super PACs. They help fund your campaign. All right. This is only a start. Uh, it gets even better. But here, I mean, Bernie goes on to discuss more about money and politics, climate change, wealth inequality, corporate consolidation, you know, his, his general Bernie speech. But as you'll see with the other clips, he really goes, you know, even further and uh, than what he has, you know, normally is known for saying. And it's it gets even better. But... Here, look, Lindsey Graham, throughout this debate, I watched the entire thing. He attacks, every, every attempt at an attack by Lindsey Graham on Bernie Sanders is trying to act like Biden is implementing Bernie's agenda. When that is nowhere near the case, like he says over and over again, elect more Republicans because the Bernie agenda is not work. Like what Bernie, like what are you talking about? Biden right now is governing as a conservative. He is barely even doing what he pr promised to do during the campaign. Has he talked at all? Has Biden talked at all about a public option? He ran on that in 2020. He hasn't even mentioned it since. So th to act like Biden is somehow implementing this progressive agenda and it's not working is so incredibly dishonest. And Lindsey Graham knows he's full of shit, but it's the only way he's able to even attack what Bernie Sanders is saying here. Now, let's go on to the next clip here where it's about gas prices. And it becomes very clear how how correct Bernie Sanders is and how Lindsey Graham has no ability to combat this in any way. So I would ask you to focus on lowering gas prices, securing the border, and bringing law and order back to America. And the only way you're gonna do that, Senator Sanders, is abandon the agenda that you've charted for America, cause it is not working. Well, let's talk about gas prices, cause you're right. They are outrageously high, and Vermont, they're now filled up the other day, $5.05 a gallon. Meanwhile, the major oil companies made $35 billion in profit in the first quarter of this year. And at the end of the year, it is estimated they're going to give $88 billion in stock buybacks to their wealthy shareholders. So I do think we have to do something about the outrageously high price of gas. I think the president should bring the major oil companies in and tell them we're going to have a windfall profits tax on what they're doing in order to stop them from ripping off the American people. You know, the last time that oil prices were at $118 a barrel, which is what they are right now, roughly speaking, average gasoline prices at the pump were $3.83, not 
over $5 a gallon. So I think in the midst of what is going on in this world, and that is the war in Ukraine and Russia oil and the stopping of oil, I think what the oil companies are doing is taking advantage of that situation and raising prices to an outrageous level, which is hurting the American working family. All right, so I got some tabs on this because, of course, Bernie Sanders is 100% correct. And Lindsey Graham, as a representative of the establishment, as he even nodded along in that first clip to Bernie saying that, and a representative, because of that, of capitalism, Graham has no you know, retort to this. He, he can't combat this because Bernie's exactly right. The issue is corporate greed. So looking here at this graph, this is from Representative uh, Diana uh, DeGetty, if I'm saying that correctly. The price of oil is down 20% from its peak earlier this month, but the price at the pump has stayed near record highs. Big oil is raking in record profits while the American people feel the pain at the pump. If these companies don't act now to lower gas prices, Congress will. So look, price per gallon of gas has stayed roughly the same. Meanwhile, cost per barrel of oil down considerably. Why the hell is this happening? Purely because of corporate greed, because they are allowed to do this. If they are allowed to do this, they will do it. They will try and get as much profit as they can because that is what they do as a corporation. That is their responsibility. So unless you control that in some way, which Biden is not doing, he's not doing what, Biden, what, what Bernie's telling him to do. Unless you try and control that in some way, this is going to continue happening. So, you know, more graphs here. Oil prices and gasoline prices uh, disconnect. This is in Canadian, but it's, you know, similar uh, result here for Americans. So you see here, national average gas price way up here in the light blue. Meanwhile, crude oil price all the way down here. You can also look at U.S. gas prices, again, has increased dramatically with the profits of the four large oil companies. Hmm. Funny how that works. And another piece here from The Guardian. Largest oil and gas producers made close to $100 billion in first quarter of 2022. This is from a month ago. Shell made $9.1 billion in profit, almost three times what it made in the same period last year, while Exxon raked in $8.8 billion. This is corporate greed. They are allowed to do this, so they will do this. That's the problem here. The fact that private companies own a natural resource. If you want to actually fix this issue, and Bernie, you know, is not going to go this far because he knows there's, this is not possible with the current Congress, but nationalize the industry. If you want actual energy independence, you know, Lindsey Graham talks about energy independence. That's, he mentioned that several times in this, in this uh, debate. Actual energy independence would be the American people owning that natural resource, which they do not. Private companies do. But of course, Lindsey Graham also not going to bring that up. Now let's get to the next clip, which is on why Medicare for all won't pass. What we need is a government that represents all of us and not just wealthy, powerful, special interests. So that is what I am working on. What I believe, you know, you talk about will Medicare pass on the floor of the Senate tomorrow? No, it will not. But the real question is not whether it passes or not, it's what the American people want. And you know what the American people do want? They do want Medicare for all. You talk about the joys and beauties of private insurance. Talk to the millions of workers who lost their private insurance during COVID. So I think it is time for the working families of this country to stand up, demand a government represents all, not just the few. So I'm calling on Senator Schumer to bring Medicare for all to the floor of the Senate sooner rather than later so we can vote on it. Because if the American people want it, and those people who vote against it should lose their job. That's the way it works. Again, with this bullshit. Is this how it works, really? If that's how it worked, then you would have 80% of Congress getting replaced because of the approval rating. Right now, you have only 20%, according to a Gallup here, 20% approval rating of Congress. So why aren't 80, why isn't 80% of Congress getting replaced? Because Money buys elections. Money dictates who your two choices are. Now, sometimes you're lucky and get, you know, a progressive that sneaks through who is is not bought by big dollars. But usually that happens in a state like New York or California, not often anywhere else. So because of that, you have a record low approval rating, yet these people stay in because money buys the elections. Regardless of who wins, you have a pro-corporate candidate and at the same time, about 40% of people don't even vote. So those are the people that Democrats have to actually speak to 
with a candidate that is fighting for the working class. But this is the issue. So this is why uh, a, a incredibly popular policy like Medicare for All, which I've covered a million times, incredibly popular in polling, this is why it will not pass the Senate or pass Congress, because they you have people in, pos in positions of power in government that are not actually there to represent people. They are there to represent corporations. And Lindsey Graham goes to this line again and again, despite Bernie, you know, calling out his bullshit here. It, it proves Lindsey Graham knows he's full of shit because it doesn't matter how many times Bernie Sanders calls out the actual reason that popular things don't pass. Lindsey Graham will not acknowledge that because he himself is bought by corporations. That's why he is there. Now let's get to the next clip, which is about the crisis in democracy. I have a lot of problems with the Democrats, but they are far superior to where the Republicans are. And let me give you an example. When we talk about major, major crises, I think many leading political scientists will tell you that right now we're looking for the first time in my lifetime and yours at a real threat to the existence of democracy in America. And you know why? Because we have a former president whose name is Donald Trump goes around the country telling people, hey, I won the election. In fact, I probably won it by a landslide, but they, they stole it. They took it away from me. All right. Now, that happens to be what we call a big lie. And yet many of the Republicans that Senator Graham are asking you to vote for are maintaining that big lie. What does that mean? It goes beyond Trump. It goes beyond the 2020 election. It means what they are saying is the entire system, you can't trust anybody. And if you can't trust the election results, then what is the obvious alternative? We need a strong man, all right? Conservatives went to, I think it was Hungary, to meet with Mr. Orban, who runs an authoritarian type society. So the struggle we're facing is not just that Lindsay and I disagree on this or that issue, which we do. It is the future of American democracy and when we, whether we move to authoritarianism based on, among other things, a very big lie. Well, quickly, Guess can you what? address that, Senator? Trump lost the election. Can you address that, Senator? I mean, can you say definitively the election was not stolen? Yeah, I, I voted to certify the election. There were some mail-in balloting shenang uh, chicanery out there, but no, no, I voted to certify the election. Pres president Biden's the president. And whether Did he Trump win the election? Yeah. Okay. Now, what about all of the candidates out there who are trying to say that he did? Your Republican candidates that you want people well, to vote for? Well, I, you know, what about the people saying defund the police? You talk to them, I'll talk to that crowd. But your so crowd here. is a lot larger <laughs> than my crowd. So, so this is really the one clear difference between these two parties. Democrats recognize the results of an election. Republicans don't. In fact, a majority of Republican voters now doubt whether or not Biden actually won the election. They think Trump won because of the garbage being spewed by people that Lindsey Graham is supporting and by, of course, media networks like parts of Fox News, but especially places like Newsmax and other more extreme right-wing media. So, and the argument Lindsey Graham uses there at the end is so stupid. He is comparing a disagreement over policy and policing to the foundations of democracy. When you have people not willing to accept the results of an election and you are saying vote for those people, vote for more Republicans, as Lindsay said throughout this, this debate here, he, you are supporting people that are against democracy. There's no debate on this at all. It is obvious how uh, or which, which side of this issue um, is just completely either dishonest or actually fascist and want to just take over regardless of what it means for democracy. Now, let me get to the next clip, which is on socialism. And this is one of my favorite clips throughout this debate. But I can tell you right now, the pathway to socialism is being paved as I speak, and the worst is yet to come. Do you think raising the minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour is socialistic? Do you think doing what every other major country on earth does, guaranteeing health care to all people, is socialistic? Do you think expanding Medicare to cover dental care is quite socialistic? Do you think in terms of Social Security, you know, you're on the Budget Committee, we mm -hmm. just had a hearing about this. Lindsay and I disagree on this. I think we should increase benefits for Social Security recipients by lifting the cap, which is now at $147,000. So a millionaire pays the same amount as somebody making 147. 
thousand. Lift that cap, we can increase Social Security benefits by two hundred dollars a month for every beneficiary in America. Is that socialistic? Is making sure that all of our kids are able to get a higher education is that socialistic? Is saying that three Wall Street companies should not control twenty trillion dollars in assets that we got to break them up? Is that socialistic? Is saying that CEOs should not make 350 times what their workers make. So, you know, I understand that certain words will have an impact on certain parts of our country. But take a look at the issues that we are fighting for on every one of those issues. Lindsay, guess what? American people support me, not you. Mic drop. That was so good. That That is exactly how you call out the bullshit, the bullshit fear mongering around the term socialism. Which, of course, Lindsey Graham, you know, utilized several times in that debate as well. But Bernie, just going point by point about what he supports, that what Lindsey Graham is calling socialist or, or socialism. These, again, with the dis he is so dishonest. Lindsey Graham is so incredibly dishonest. He knows he is full of shit. He knows he can just scream socialism and that, you know, a, a contingent of his of his base of Republicans, you know, a majority of them are just going to be like, oh, scary socialism. Meanwhile, what is happening right now? Capitalism, not socialism. Like <laughs> the state that America is in right now, the crisis they are facing, the low wages, the in extreme wealth inequality, the gas prices, the climate crisis, go down the list, healthcare. The issue is capitalism, not socialism. I mean, if anything, Bernie should be screaming capitalism throughout this debate. But instead you have Lindsey Graham screaming socialism, which is not, there's nothing here, nothing in America currently that is that is socialism or, or anywhere near the idea of uh, of what Lindsey Graham is trying to put forward in terms of fear mongering around, you know, uh, authoritarian governments from, you know, 100 years ago. So it, this is so incredibly stupid. But thankfully, I think Bernie did a good job there uh, laying it out. Last clip here, and this is also on Medicare for all, but you see kind of the rapport that Bernie's able to have when he makes these kinds of arguments. Medicare for all gonna raise your taxes. You know what? It will. But you know what else it's gonna do? You ain't gonna have to pay a nickel in premiums, a nickel in co-payments, a nickel in deductibles. And if you are the average family out there, or the average small business, or in fact the average corporation, you are going to save money. Now Lindsay apparently thinks that people just love paying money to the insurance companies. Average family, average person in America, Lindsay, 12,000 bucks a year. Insurance companies making huge profits. So if I go to the American people and I say, hey, Brett, guess what? You're gonna pay more, you're gonna pay 5,000 more in taxes, but you're gonna pay 8,000 less in premiums, deductibles, and co-payments. Now, I know he works with Fox, maybe he can say it, but most people would say, <laughs> Bernie, that's a pretty good deal. You saved me 3,000 bucks, and you're guaranteeing comprehensive health care. Senator, I was waiting. People. I was waiting for the Fox. The Fox <laughs> right. Yeah, I was waiting. I could have been, been waiting. I could have been. Bernie Sanders is incredibly likable, even for conservatives. And it is clear in that clip, even though they don't agree with him for reasons they can't really describe, because if they were to describe them, they'd be admitting that, yes, I'm here on, the half of corp on behalf of corporations. But even though they, you know, they can't argue with him, he, he's able to connect with people in a way that very few politicians can. And that's because Bernie Sanders is genuine. He's been fighting for these same issues forever. And even Lindsey Graham, dishonest Lindsey Graham, acknowledged that throughout this debate a, a couple of times, mentioned how he believes, you know, Bernie Sanders is a fighter for what he believes in. Because he is, no one can deny that Bernie Sanders is genuine. Because you can go back and look at clips from, you know, the 1980s and see him fighting for the same thing. So this is what helped me realize, even though I already knew this, but just even more so, that Bernie Sanders, if he has the opportunity to, should definitely try to run for president again. Meaning, challenge Joe Biden. I know it sounds crazy. He may not win. It may not be a good idea for, you know, I don't know, politically it may not be a good idea. But Biden is just not, he should not run for a second term. He will lose, absolutely lose if he runs again. He has to step away, go away, and there has to be an open primary. So, you know, ideally, I, 
ideally, Bernie really probably shouldn't challenge Joe Biden directly in a primary because I just don't, the way the media works, it's just not going to work out. But there should be an open primary. And if there is an open primary, then definitely Bernie has to run again. No one is able to connect with people the way Bernie can. Nobody is as genuine as Bernie is on these issues, who is currently in the spotlight nationally, who is able to win a primary, win an election. I just think nobody comes close. And this debate, I think, really showcased that.